Allow me to introduce myself. Who knows what dastardly crime he might perpetrate next? He's a very clever arch criminal who must be. Hey y'all, welcome back to Amy Codes, and this week we will talk about how to become a tech conference speaker. So to give you a little bit of context, uh, I started my full-time career in March of this year. Um, I think I talked about that a lot. Anyway, so two months, two or three months after starting my full-time job, um, I started applying to conferences. And so far, I've spoken at four, um, Rocky Mountain Ruby, KubeCon, Open Source Summit, and AlterConf, and then I will also be speaking at one in March in South Africa called DevConf, which is super exciting. Um, and I figured I had a lot to share in terms, especially for first time conference speakers um, and or maybe even experienced ones, so I figured I would give you some advice. So let's get started. So the first thing I figured we should talk about is brainstorming topics um, and how to go about doing that. So something that I find really helpful is actually keeping this notebook right next to my desk. What I do every single time I'm programming is um, I will write down notes. Um, things that I had trouble with learning, things that I had trouble finding resources for, uh, things that I find interesting, things just like outlines, or, uh, like outlines of what I did for the day, um, things that are perhaps monotonous that I have to keep on repeating. Um, those are all really great inspiration uh, for tech talk topics. That's a tongue full. Um, and that's honestly what I do because if I have trouble with it, I'm sure that other people will too. Which is another thing is, I think that people get self-conscious in terms of, oh, like, this is so hard for me, why is it so hard, I must be stupid. I promise you, you are not stupid. Um, honestly, like, whatever tutorial or blog post that you're reading, maybe it's just not your learning style, or maybe it's just a really bad tutorial. Don't worry about it. Like, use that as a learning opportunity and as an uh, opportunity to formalize your understanding and convert that into a tech talk. The second thing I figured we would talk about is how to actually find conferences. So, the first thing that you need to target is figure out what your niche is. So, for me, um, again, as a, lot of, as a lot of you know, is I like to talk about or learn about distributed systems, containers, um, Kubernetes, I also like to learn about Golang, um, infrastructure, all of that jazz. So figure, figure out what your niche is and then from there, that way you're able to target the conferences that you really want to go to. Um, and. Honestly, the next step is a lot of this comes down to Twitter. So what I usually do is I just hunt for people that are really prominent in these communities and follow their Twitter accounts because oftentimes what happens is they'll retweet uh, CFPs, which is short for a call for proposal, and that's like the call for when you want to submit your abstract. So I'll, I'll follow these people on Twitter, they'll retweet these things, then I'll follow the conferences Twitter, and then those conferences will retweet things, and it's just sort of like a rolling cycle. Um, another thing that I find really useful is if I look at the conference website itself, they'll, they'll, look, they'll list all of the past speakers or current speakers, and then I'll go on to these speakers' uh, personal like websites, because oftentimes they have their own websites, and then a lot of times they'll like list down conferences that they've spoken at, and then I'll like hunt down more conferences that way. So a lot of it is just like this sort of like weird graph sort of relationshipy thing where you just keep on diving down those holes. So let's talk about the abstract itself. Uh, prior to sort of like breaking down what an abstract should look like, I would first say that don't put too much pressure on writing your abstract and also you shouldn't have the expectation that you know everything as you're writing the abstract. Um, Something funny is that I often use uh, tech talks or like uh, like CFPs as a challenge to myself to learn about something that I've always wanted to make time for. Because believe it or not, um, the expectation of having 50 or so people is a really great motivator to learn about a topic. So I don't always know, like, I don't, I'm not an expert about the topic prior to submitting the abstract to it. It's more of like a promise to myself that I will learn more about this uh, before actually speaking upon it. So the breakdown of the abstract itself should look like this. So the, the thing that you really want to focus on is really framing the problem. That is like where the bulk of your abstract should go. 
because if the person doesn't understand what the problem that you're trying to solve is, then your whole talk or your whole abstract is, is useless. So really frame the problem. The next thing that I would say is provide some sort of like hint of the solution and it should be pretty like superficial or even contrived um, only because like if you go into too much detail about this, oftentimes you need to provide a lot of background and having a, a contrived example really um, like, pr like uh, helps you not need to pr provide that much context. Um, because oftentimes these abstracts they have like word count limits. So put the bulk of the words in terms of the problem framing itself and then sort of have a contrived solution. The next thing that you can do if you have more space is then step back and provide a bigger picture of how your solution fits into a larger system. And then after that what you want to do is summarize all three points and pull everything together. So there's a beginning, middle, and end that, um, and that's, that's how it should look like. Or at least that's how I do it. Maybe other people provide like different advice. In terms of submitting the actual talk itself, chill for a second, take a deep breath, breathe, it's okay, close your eyes, and then press the submit button. Um, oftentimes when I see first time speakers and when I, when I talk to a few of them, um, they turn themselves down first and don't even give, them, give themselves a chance, right? Like, how can you be accepted to a talk if you don't even try? Um, I promise you, what you think that you have to offer is, it, it, does, it does have value, right? Like, different people at different um, advanced or beginner levels have a lot to share. So one talk, the, the technical talk that I often give is just like teaching people about Kubernetes and how I came to learn about it and like I framed uh, the problem and like different ways that I like came to understand the use of Kubernetes for instance. Um, it was very much a beginner talk, it was pretty like popularly accepted and you'd be surprised like what people think is valuable. Just do it. Um, another thing that I would say that is that it's completely okay to recycle your talk. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you are full-time professionals or maybe you're a student or you just have a lot to do, totally feel free to recycle your talk. Um, conference organizers, I promise you, they, they probably don't care that you're recycling them. They're just more, they're so happy that they have you live in person to explain this topic. And if they do mind, like, again, they'll just decline your talk and it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it. Um, but it's totally okay to recycle your talk. I've, I've recycled many of my talks and given them many times. And, often, and honestly, like, the more you practice, the better your talk will become. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll, is I'll move around the slides and to, to like specifically cater to maybe like a theme of, of the conference or to cater to the conference itself, but it's still the same basic idea. That's totally okay. Um, but yeah, you have a limited amount of time. Totally feel free to recycle your talks. In terms of the talk itself, uh, what I would say is totally feel free to write speaker notes. Um, while you're still ramping up and becoming a better speaker, speaker notes, it really helps to like fight the stage fright because what, oftentimes what will happen to me is I'll forget what I'm talking about and like lose myself and I have to like reference my speaker notes to figure out where, where I am in my talk. Um, and that's super useful. Don't worry about like eye contact with the audience when you're first speaking. Um, it's completely okay to like you know, like look at your notes uh, when you first start. You'll like slowly gain more confidence and like have more eye contact with your audience as you become a better speaker. But when you're first starting, like totally don't worry about it. Something that I also really want to touch about is demoing because if you don't do it correctly, a lot of times uh, it doesn't go too well. So demos in itself are very detailed things, right? Like you're writing actual command line uh, prompts or, or code or whatever. Um, and what you really need to do is take a step back and before the demo itself, tell the audience an outline of what you're about to do so that they have a context of what's going on and you don't lose them during the demo. Before you run each command, again, tell them what this command is doing um, before you actually run it so that you don't lose your audience. What I find for talks is talks aren't really a time for like giving super detailed explanations because your audience only has a very limited like attention span. It's a time to provide inspiration of things that they can Google the, like themselves. So this bridges upon another thing that I often do is I give my audience, what I want my audience to walk away with is 
enough context to, to Google the topic itself. Oftentimes in the left hand corner I will provide, for instance, like little googling keywords that they can look up themselves with each slide and I'll post the slides on my Twitter that they can like look and research themselves. I'm not there to provide like a lecture, I'm there to provide uh, background and inspiration for things that they can learn about themselves. Another thing that I would, would suggest is provide a lot of diagrams, especially for things like distributed systems. It's a very visual thing. You're having entire systems um, talking to each other with different protocols and things like that. Provide di diagrams because visual aid is always really useful. Another thing that you should do in terms of speaking is edit, edit, edit. Um, like, I'm going to hone in again that you only have 30 to 40 minutes to convey what you're about to say. And your goal is not there to provide a lecture. Like, you're, like if, it, if your talk is too detailed, I promise you, you will probably lose your audience. Um, figure out what things that you should abstract away. Figure out what things you should tell the audience to... Uh, like Google for themselves. Figure out like also what background the audience should have. Like you want to be, you want them to have, take away as much information as possible without bombarding them with too much detail, um, especially detail that they can figure out themselves. And finally, what I would say is have fun. Um, congratulations for being accepted to your talk. I promise you, it is such a fun experience. Um, I think a lot, there's a lot of fear and anxiety that comes around tech conference speaking, but I also, for me personally, I gain a lot from it, right? You are there maybe representing your company, definitely representing yourself. You're there taking ownership over what your understanding of the domain knowledge is, um, and you're there to share with your audience, and uh, I promise your audience will take a lot out of it as well. So have fun and congratulations. So if you enjoyed my video for this week, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also, you can find me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram via the Amy code. Um, if you support what I, if you want to support what I do, definitely check out my Patreon page. All of the links are down below and I will see you all next week. Bye!